Ever since I saw these teeny tiny little seashells, I wanted to do something with them involving earrings. These are so little. Look how small they are. So tiny, very flat, very thin. They're like as thin as a dime, but way skinnier. Anyway, um, they are so fun down there. And then I have a little four millimeter uh, cat's eye and six millimeter amethyst. I wanted to do this in silver. I didn't have 24 gauge silver. I wanted to really show you how the 24 gauge looks so good. So I'm doing it in this black. It's called black gunmetal or hematite, or this this one is calling it titanium. I don't know what the heck, but it says it's shiny black, and it looks good on a lot of stuff. It's going to be a harsh contrast on this on the white, so I thought I really wanted to do it in silver, but I think it's going to look interesting. It's going to pop. You'll get to see it real clearly. Okay, anyway, let's get started. So I'm going to take about 10 inches and take one of these guys, and let's put it through the little hole. Now, 24 gauge is very very thin for doing anything that requires strength bringing it to the middle of the wire I'm pinching these two together and what I'm going to do now is um twist them a couple times but if we double it up and we make a teeny tiny loop then we don't need to worry too much about it um about about it getting yanked out of place especially since earrings tend to get less of a beating because by nature, you're trying to keep your earlobes protected and you don't pull on them too much. So I'm making this teeny tiny little loop for my round nose. I'll uh, roll it really tight. And then I'm gonna hold on to them. Hold on to these little loops still, roll them even tighter. And I'm gonna wrap this around like that. So now this is really locked in here. And now I'm just going to have fun with this as if it was a giant pendant stone. I'm going to do the same kind of pattern, but it's teeny tiny little. So it's very thin wire on a very tiny little piece, and that's going to be very fun. So we're going to um, start doing little cool swirls and stuff. We're going to kind of keep the strands together, but then kind of separate them. And I'm kind of glad that we are using the black gunmetal because it's really showing up. And it's going to look really cute on somebody's ear when it's finished. Whereas the silver would look also pretty, but you wouldn't see it pop from far away. Whereas this, you're going to see every little detail. So I'm being very careful about how much I want the loops to stay together or be separate. And that just comes from making these little swirls hundreds of times. And you really get to enjoy them. When you find patterns you like, just do them over and over again and find little variations and experiment and just have fun and learn what works. Um, so I'm going to come around the back here and see what am I going to do. Just come back up the front. And I think I'm just going to go straight up like this and give it a nice scarf. A little teeny tiny scarf for my little teeny tiny piece. It's trying hard to get this camera to focus, to stay in focus. And I mean, as big as this looks on the camera right now, I mean, this is like tiny. Like I can't emphasize like, like an entire ant, like the little insect would could like sit on this like it was a canoe. That's how tiny it is. And I'm going to carefully, I wish I had my little dainty perfect cutters, but these, these uh, kind of clumsy cutters will be just fine because I've done this so many times. I'm just an amazing cutter. People should hire me to just come and cut their, their ends. Just come to your house when you're finished your jewelry, almost finished, and I'll cut the ends for you. I'll charge a $25 an hour fee just to come and cut, cut the ends off your jewelry. Minimum of one hour, even if I only help with one piece of jewelry. I think that's a good business deal. There you go, see that? And just like I would with a regular large pendant, I'm gonna tweak it, try to get everything just right. It's so cute though. And pull this down a little more. Pull this down a little more. See that? Oh, it's so cute, look at that little baby. So cute. And I don't need to worry about these getting snagged because, I mean, I will give them a little pinch just to get them a little tighter. But in reality, and a tiny little turn right there. 
It's a tiny little turn. In reality, um, these are going to be on your ears. They're not going to be like pendants get banged all over the place while you're wearing them on your neck. Rings get really beat up. Bracelets get beat up. Earrings take the least beating, so you can get away with making them a little bit daintier. But you want to make sure those sharp ends are still tucked in. I can barely see where they are. Where are they? I think they're right there. Okay, so cute. And let's do the same thing with these little beads here. Make them look so cute. Um, I'll take the same wire and we'll, I don't even know how much I'm gonna use. I'll just take like nine inches to be safe. Thread these guys on there. Again, bring it to the middle of the wire. And just as I would do if I had heavy gauge, just do two little bends to hold it in. Tiny little loop. Wrap it around the pliers. Roll it. Roll it some more. Hold it tight. Get on the others. Actually, let's lock it in first. Wrap it around like this to lock it in. There we go. Get the other side. The same little thing. Now, I don't trust, I could make just a loop that opens and closes to connect it, but I don't trust this thin wire to have an open and closed loop. So this is going to be a super tightly closed loops and then I will use jump rings to connect them because the jump rings are made of much stronger metal and they're thicker. All right, we're going to, now we're going to start wrapping this diagonal like that. Throw a diagonal then behind in the crease, diagonal behind in the crease and anchor it around the loop. I'm gonna take this one and do the same. Let's see, I keep it going the same direction, spinning around. So no matter which way it spins, you'll see the little wire and then wrap it. Now we're just gonna wrap it. All kinds of stacks of wraps right there. Tucking in that little guy is going to be really tedious, but we can do it because we're amazing. I'm going to do the same one on this. Just wrap it. Wrap it, wrap it, wrap it. Okay. I'm going to cut just the tiniest tab so we can tuck it in. You have to be very careful. Just very careful. Get in there really, really carefully. Oh, I think I did it. Let's do this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't even hardly see what's happening with this. These teeny tiny, but you know what I'm, this is what I always do. Make the little scarf, tuck in the little, the little sharp end. You can hardly tell if it's being tucked. I'm going to use my, the tips of my round nose pliers for this because it's so teeny tiny. I do have special pliers someone gave me that have like teeny tiny little ends, but I left them at the office. And here I am at home, trying to show you guys. Just tuck the little babies in. Tuck the little babies in, good night. Okay, now we'll just stretch this guy out. Take our fingernail and just move these wires where we want them in place. And I think we're good. Put it down here. Connect it with the jump ring. The camera likes to float like it's in the water. Okay, um, where are my jump rings? Get the little earring hooks. Open them up. Actually, let's do the jump ring first. Let's get the little jump ring. Open it up. Uh, you probably need two pairs of pliers to do this, but my fingers are just fascinatingly amazing. I'm going to do it with my fingers and one pair of pliers. And we'll hook this guy. I'm trying to get that in there. Oh, it's so tedious. It's so cute. Oh, yeah. Did it. And then closing it. 
closing it I could too, but I'm just going to be safe and use two pairs of pliers. Make sure you close it very good. Examine it with your magnifying glass, make sure it's fully closed. And now we put the earring hook on. Open it sideways, upside down, so that that little ball thing falls down and it's not in our way. And then we make sure that the side we want to face out is facing out and not the wrong side. And look at it and mm, when it's facing out like this, this part is turned sideways. So I have to turn it back to make it right. There we go. So when I put the earring hook on it, it won't turn sideways. Now it's going to turn every which way because it's dangling from the ear. But when it finally settles in place, you do want it to face out from the ear. So that's always keep that in mind. Okay, close it. And there we have the cute little earring. So cute. So little. It's actually brighter than this. You need better light to see it. Oh, so pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have fun, guys. Mm -hmm.